Hello, this is Fernando Gomez Sancha. I'm going to show you a case I did yesterday. This is a man with a relatively bulky prostate. The ultrasound estimation was um, 90 grams uh, using an abdominal ultrasound. Maybe a little bit smaller as ultrasound tends to overestimate uh, prostatic sizes. But I'm going to show you the in block technique. It's very beautiful. It's amazingly fast, and I think it's going to change the way we see holmium enucleation of the prostate. So there you can see the sphincter. I try to mark uh, the mucosa and create this line, what I call the white line, uh, in intimate contact with the sphincter edge. I don't like to go inwards. I don't like to go some millimeters inside because this is this is where you have to detach the sphincter uh, right at the edge. So you can see this is an asymmetrical apex. So in one side there is more bulk than in the other side, but I try to stay, as I said, close to the sphincter and delimitate this white line, which is going to serve as a reference for the rest of the procedure. I'm using a Holmium uh, 100 watt uh, laser. In this case, uh, I'm not using the new MOSES effect, the new MOSES uh, system. And the settings are uh, two uh, joules and 50 hertz. So it's important to deepen a little bit this white line. You see, you can see the sphincter edge and initially, we're going to make the lower part liberation. So I'm going to cut, you see this attachment of the apex to the sphincter in the lower part, trying to get up, let's say, to three o'clock. Because we will do the liberation of the lower part initially. And I don't want to break the, the sphincter here. It's, it's quite liberated already. Now I'm going to enter mechanically into the plane at the apex. I found this very fast and very convenient. You see, that's how I enter the plane between the adenoma and the surgical capsule. Just with the tip of the scope, I have a special scope from Richard Wolf that allows for this mechanical bisection very, very gently. But this is more or less all of the mechanical dissection I will do. Here I'm just cutting on top of this the Vera Montanum to join the planes in, in both sides. And then I will position uh, the fiber at 12 o'clock. Here I'm checking that uh, the liberation of this fibers at the, at the edge is, is complete because we don't want to, to, to break the sphincter's mucosa. So now for the remainder of the procedure, I'm going to keep my fiber at 12 o'clock and I will not rotate it. I think it's important to make this operation simple and having to rotate the fiber, having to rotate uh, usually confuses more than it helps in my opinion. So I like to keep it at 12 and work with the camera fixed at 12 and the, the fiber fixed at 12. Okay, so I like to do a posterior dissection. Initially, take it a little bit into the, into the, the, the prostate, in the direction of the bladder neck without taking it too far, just let's say dissect what is possible to dissect. In this, case, the in this case, the plane is not very beautiful, but um, there I go. I think this saves a lot of time, makes the pressure much faster. And um, you have to be always aware that there might be nodular growths that are growing inside the capsule. So always looking for the, for the good plane, but also keeping an eye on the possibility of nodules that grow, pushing the capsule and compressing it. 
And you see now, when we go back, the apex has been liberated until three and nine. So all the lower part of the apex has been liberated. Okay, and this is the trick. I have to go now and cut into the prostate, following this white line, keeping the fiber horizontal, especially at the 12 o'clock uh, area, so from, from 11 to 1. And then, once you have, let's say, detached the prostatic apex from the sphincter by doing this cut, then you can go and look for the proper plane. Many people think if you cut into the prostate, you're going to miss the plane. Okay, no, the idea is this cut will, let's say, liberate the sphincter from the apex. And then afterwards, afterwards, this is the, let's say, 12 o'clock position. This is the other side. Here I can see, you see the, the white line. What I'm doing is cutting into the prostate first. A little bit, just three, four millimeters uh, in depth. You can see now that the prostate detaches from the sphincter a little bit, and then you see this would be a wrong plane, but I'm not concerned about this now because I will go to look for the good plane. You see, once I have cut uh, four millimeters into the prostate, five millimeters into the prostate, following the white line, keeping the fiber horizontal at the 12 o'clock area, what I have done is I have detached the, the sphincter from the apex. Here still you see you have to follow this curve that we marked initially, bring it up slowly, don't hesitate to cut a little bit into the adenoma. You see that's the mucosal edge at 12 o'clock and then this allows you to go again into the right plane and look for the, for the right plane to go all the way anterior. This is what I call the early apical liberation, which means that we're going to liberate the apex uh, right at the beginning of the procedure. And why is that important? I think when you liberate the apex uh, completely at the beginning of the procedure, you stop worrying about the sphincter. And also, I think that this limits uh, distension and traction of the sphincter here. You see you, the attack to the to the to the apical uh, liberation has to go from the lower part coming up, and then see if you can join from both sides uh, in the midline at twelve o'clock. Okay. The important thing is to to know that once you deepen this white line, you are let's say working a little bit far away from the sphincter now and you can see that we will be able to preserve the whole mucosal uh, lining of the sphincter, which I think it's very important to preserve continence. So here you can see that now we progress a little bit following the, the right plane, trying to come up, trying to come up at 12 o'clock and let's say join the dissection on both sides. This is the trickiest part of the operation. This is the, let's say, the part of the operation that can take longer, maybe 10 minutes or so. And then once the sphincter is totally liberated, the rest of the procedure is a piece of cake. It's very easy. We have many advantages of this approach. One is that as you can see, we are only irrigating a very small space. We are not uh, irrigating into the bladder. You see, we are developing a space between capsule and adenoma. Here, I think I'm connecting now, let's say, both planes at 12 o'clock. Um, there we go. So now you have to follow this plane. Try to go as much up as you can, so you don't leave anterior tissue. But I would say that the first consideration here is respecting the sphincter. If there is some anterior tissue attached to the sphincter, at the end of the procedure, you can always review it and take it out. If you were not, let's say, if you left a little bit of tissue 
uh, anteriorly attached to the sphincter. As I was saying, this space is irrigated uh, very efficiently because it's very small. And if there is bleeding, the, ble the bleeding is washed out. This blood doesn't go to the bladder and stays there as it happens when you do a three lobe technique or you do incisions in the prostate uh, in a classical way. So now you see that the procedure is going to be a piece of cake and extremely fast because we are dissecting this uh, line of attack, this line of attack, look at the sphincter, how, how beautiful. Uh, the whole mucosa has been preserved. I'll show it to you later as well. But as you can see now, the idea is that we can follow all around. We have a line of attack that it's uh, uh, going around, going around, and you just have to follow this line. Okay, instead of going very deep in a very small area, what I try to do is to follow this wide line that orients you very well and tells you where you are. You see the fiber is always kept at 12 o'clock. And you will see that this prostate has some nodular growth uh, in, the, in the lower part. We will see how, how to do. Okay, so initially the plane has to open because we are dissecting a spherical or nearly spherical uh, adenoma. So what I do is at the beginning of the procedure, my, my targeting of the line, you see it's a little bit external. So as, as I am dissecting the initial part, uh, I, that I, I need to open up a little bit. So my, my fiber is going to dissect just firing straight at the attack line, you see, this way. But then, of course, when we are more than the equator, uh, when we are progressing, we need to close a little bit. We need to get close to the adenoma. So my fiber is going to fire, let's say, more close to the adenoma. It's very simple. There are two, two places to fire. At the beginning of the procedure, you will fire straight at the attack line. And as we have to, let's say, get closer to the adenoma to follow the contour of the prostate, and here you can see this is the bladder neck. You can tell very easily because the fibers of the bladder neck initially are round, as you can see, but then we find these vertical fibers that inequivocally tell you that you're going to enter the bladder. So that's the middle lobe we saw before. It's cutting the mucosa anteriorly. Typically, I would dissect the bladder neck, let's say going down and trying to reach six o'clock. You'll see in this case, things uh, turned out a little bit differently. But I, I think it illustrates very well how fast, how fast this dissection can be and how easy the good visibility we have because the irrigation is, is, is amazing and how easy it is also to follow the line of attack. Okay, here, now we are, let's say, closing in the, in the posterior aspect. You see, initially we descended, we went to the equator of the, of the adenoma, and then we have to ascend. Now, and here you can see that uh, this is the lateral uh, aspect, and now this is the posterior, lateral again, trying to liberate this, this part, but you can see here, how flimsy the, the capsule can get when you have a nodule that pushes the capsule and thins it. So carefully here we are in danger of, let's say, perforating, but here you have to stay very close to the, to the adenoma, very close. You see my fiber and the energy, let's say it's mainly hitting the adenoma, but the, the plane will dissect and there will be some coagulation effect on the uh, prostatic capsule. So there we are, just following this line, following this line. As I said, usually I would continue cutting the bladder neck from uh, anterior to posterior. And then I would take both incisions in both sides, let's say closer and closer to the midline until I can liberate the, the adenoma. But here you'll see that we're going to find there's a very nice uh, middle lobe pocket that dissects very easily. 
and we're going to enter the bladder from the posterior aspect. Yeah? This is one of these nodules, you see? They grow and they thin the capsule, but you need to take them out. And I think it's, it's safer, it's very safe if you keep close. You see, I keep close to the, to the tissue now. I don't work now firing uh, straight at the line of attack, but a little bit closer to the adenoma. And this will dissect this plane even when we are, let's say, climbing up the, the retro trigonal space sometimes. There we go. So you can see that we enter this pocket, this middle low pocket, very nicely, very beautiful. And uh, at some moment I thought, okay, this is the, the, the mucosa of the bladder. Let's Let's go inside the bladder. This is not so common, but there we are. Uh, it was very easy to enter the bladder to, to cut the mucosa. And we had, let's say, dissected the, the anterior part of the bladder neck and now the posterior. And now we have to connect in both sides. So this would be one of the sides. You see now the, the, the prostate is free, just hanging from two. Uh, attachments in both sides. Here I was trying to go up and see, but uh, you see the prostate had lifted a little bit, it was not so easy to access, so it went to the other side. Anteriorly, trying to see, you see, how to connect both, both aspects. So, very easy, very fast, very easy orientation, and I think this is going to become the, the standard way of of doing holep because it is so fast and also you are so relaxed when you are let's say dissecting the tissue and knowing that the sphincter is perfectly uh, healthy we've seen very very low rates of incontinence and uh, also being able to do these prostates in 30 40 25 uh, minutes one hour for the largest cases, uh, one hour and 15 minutes, you know, it, it really changes everything. The other thing that changes everything is the fast morselation provided by, by the Richard Walt Piranha system. I think this has changed our lives. But here you see, this is the final detachment. And I'm going to show you how the sphincter looks at the end of the procedure, which I think it's a beauty. You can see that uh, it's uh, not even 20 minutes, I think, when the enucleation finishes. I'm not going to show you the morselation, but there you go. That's the sphincter. Look at it. Wonderful preservation all around. I hope you liked it.